Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My, the topic of my, present, my talk is keyword and the technology extraction in monolingual and uh, bilingual context because uh, the theme of, it seems that I'm required to do some, I mean the theme of this session should be related to somehow uh, to machine translation, okay, so I, I use this title. So I will discuss three things. So the first part is keyword extraction in a Chinese context, okay. The second part is terminology, terminology extraction. It's an English and Chinese bilingual terminology extraction, okay. The third one is a related work I try to extend keyword extraction uh, for Chinese, okay, to Chinese idioms in some, in some uh, scenario, for example, in microblog. Okay, so the, the first part. So what is keyword extraction? So the, the, it's clear. So given an article, uh, the task is we try to let computer to extract some words or phrases from this article. These words should be able to represent the content of that article somehow. Okay, so the, so we can regard these keywords as content identifier or content descriptor. Okay, so that, this keyword extraction. For example, given this article, so Japan this year's uh, Chinese uh, kanji, okay, is ban, okay. I, I noticed it yesterday in the in the post uh, room. So I found this article in a Chinese blog. Okay, so expected keyword can be Japan, year, hanzi, kanji. Uh, Japan uh, uh, Earthquake, assist, Overseas Assistance, Kyoto, and uh, Tinshui, so maybe Clear Water Temple, something, okay. So, we, we, have, do, we have done some work uh, in keyword extraction, and uh, to test the, the, the performance of system, we also constructed a uh, uh, application in Sina microblog uh, website. So Sina website is similar to Twitter, uh, Twitter. Okay, it is the largest microblogging uh, system in China. Okay, its user should be over should be over how, how to say one point two billion one point two billion. Okay, so far. Every day, you can you can see uh, millions millions of user uh, increase to this system. Okay, so we have developed a keyword extraction application in Sina uh, microblogging system. Okay, so the the task of, of that system is given a user. This is me. Okay, this is me. Given a user, the system will. Uh, we will get 200 recently posted uh, micro blog articles of that user. Then try then extract keywords from these 200 blog articles. Then give a cloud a, key, a cloud okay uh, composed of these. Keywords. Okay, so so this is uh, the keyword cloud for, for me. Okay, for, for for me. So you can see this is China. Okay, so the, the largest one means the 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 larger the the words the the the, bet, the, imp, the more important of that words. Okay, so China of course. So you can see.
happened this year. I have a joint research program with Boeing, so I'm going to share with you. Okay, so this application has become very popular in, in the city. become very popular, so we can see we have launched this system in the office this year, and the, the, the latest user of this application has the over 1.6 million people, so it grows very fast. So, he, uh, that that cloud can represent the, uh, as I just said, as I just said, the, it can represent the intention. Okay, or you can we can use this to identify the interest of specific person. For example, Lang Xianping is so this guy is a famous economist, very famous econom uh, economics economist. Uh, in China, okay, it, it, it seems a professor in in Chinese University of Hong Kong, okay, very famous one. So this keyword cloud is like this, so you can see big one is finance, okay, finance. Uh, Pan Shi Yi, this guy is a very famous uh, real estate developer. The most famous real estate is a billionaire. It's a, he is a billionaire. Okay, so his cloud is like this. You can see it's quite different from uh, from Lang Xianping's cloud. Very different. Very different. This is another example. Yang Lan is a famous TV program host uh, uh, based based in Hong Kong. Okay, but his cloud is very different. Okay, ha uh, happiness for for women. Okay, for love. For novel, okay, children, uh, artists, so very, very different, very different. So, so this, uh, this example show the, the usefulness of this. I mean, keyword expression, okay. How can people do this? I'll skip it. I, I just I'll. Some kind of work, for example, Japan, nine times in this 
article, year 100, four times. Okay, so also but this paragraph, so three times, one, two, three, four times. Okay, so based on frequency in the program, you suggest at least three good candidates as keyword for this for this article. Of course, we need to do both applications. We need to have a very good both application. Otherwise, you, you can not you may not inject the proper the correct words. But you can see Kyoto or or clear water temple if they only occur one time in the class course. So based on the purpose, it's very difficult to extract to extract clear water temple. But you know this temple is very important in this event for it is pronounced in this temple, in this temple. So we need to find another resources. That this is the based on machine translation with keyword extraction. A little bit strange. Uh, then you find a lot of blog article. Okay, this is a blog article so right, right, uh, written by this this person. We notice a lot of blog article, the user will assign some tags. We call social tag to this article. For example, he assigned a tag, year 21, and a clear word of title to this article. Okay. So, if we connect numerous, uh, as many as I mean, the, the article with this, with tags, as many as possible, we can construct a huge cover. Okay, that covers. Then we can try to learn the relationship between words in an article and tags assigned by the user. So you uh, by machine learning uh, strategy, then we find we can and use some knowledge. Okay, that knowledge is basically generated by humans. Okay, by machine. The machine try to learn that. So we use to find how to start, how to learn such relationship. We use machine translation methods. Okay, it's a word alignment. Okay, so this is the word alignment method. So we try to use machine translation algorithms to learn the relationship between the word candidates in text and the text assigned by user, by the writer of the blog. Okay, so that's why we call machine translation. Peter. Okay, so we have we have constructed a large scale Chinese blog corpus uh, with text. Okay, so we collect over two million articles. Okay, with tags. We can find totally so many, uh, so many different tags. Okay. Both uh, very, very big. And this tag, a big, this long, this long, okay. this long. Okay. It's long, long meaning, long meaning. And the philosophy here, I mean, I think is the use collective intelligence. You know, these articles are written by different writers. The different writers may assign text to the article they, they note freedom. Okay, no, no clear regulation to instruct how to write this text. So, but <coughs> the context as a whole can show some, can execute collective characters, collective characters, just as mentioned by Chen Dongshu. Uh, a very famous uh, writer in China. He, he, he said before, computer that can assist humans need assistance from humans. Okay, so we find this one. We try to learn something, some knowledge uh, taken. That knowledge is defined from human beings. So that's philosophy of here. 
So we we combine both. Okay, we combine both. Okay, we co we combine both to do our, to perform our task. Okay, I I will skip the algorithm. Another two supporting technology we needed in this system is first we need to uh, Chinese word citation and password tagging. Okay, so we have developed a system. You can try it in this website. In this website, okay. So, for the given this given this sentence, so the president of your university, so a small okay. So the, the program, the system can identify this as a problem. Okay. This is the NUM National University president. So this is place in Japan, Kyoto, okay, so with kind of speech. So this is the foundation. This will serve a solid foundation for keyword extraction. So this is a distribution of the users of this uh, system. Okay, so you can see China, Europe, America, Japan, uh, some Japan. Some. Okay, so Chinese word summation is very important. Uh, it can influence the result of the changes. For example, if this guy is uh, the first chief engineer for oil. So the first, the first. Chief engineer of Boeing is the Chinese, is the Chinese Wang Zhu. Okay. So if you enter Wang Zhu into Google search engine, so this article related to him, to him, to him, but this one nothing to do with him. Because here you can find Wang Zhu here, but in fact, what some patient which we have a station here, it, it means the king of the car, the car king, <laughs> assist Ballari. Falari, uh, and it is still their product in Japan. Okay, so this is the car. So because you, if you cannot identify a person with this sentence properly, the wrong sentence, the wrong chain, uh, the wrong result will be given by the chain. So what some is really key technologies. Uh, a lot of challenge. I will skip this. So we have segmentation ambiguity. We have unknown words. A lot of unknown words. And the combination of these two factors can be very complex. So that may result. For this sentence, composed of one to seven characters, uh, rough, perhaps you may have over 70 possible segmentation, segmentation paths. So very complicated. Also, WordSumit can have some impact on Google image search because image search is based on, basically, Google image search is based on the text, surrounding text of the images. So any wrong WordSumitation can affect the Google image search engine result. For example, this one. This is one tool, okay, but this one, you can see. Written with car, the king of cars, something like this. Okay, that's one factor. Another possible improvement for our system is which, you know, uh, keyword cloud, no relationship between keywords. But we currently we are doing some research. We try to find some relationship between keywords. Okay, automatically. So we try to find a hierarchical relation among keywords. Okay, so that's for part one. Part two is terminology extraction in a bilingual context. What is bilingual context? So this is Chinese. This, uh, this is English. This is Chinese. Okay, by human translation. Oh, by human translation. So that will be the input of our system. Terminology extraction from bilingual text is we try, for example, we try to run a design program that can Why was in Shu Kungsi is corresponding English trans English part origin to the foreign line transport enterprise. So, so, so 
suppose you have a huge commerce of this app. That computer can we we try to let computer to do to knowledge that automatically. So if you can expect just maybe half an hour, computer will give a list of bad technology suggested. Then you will use one one I one evening to review the suggested the suggested uh, transition pairs, then you will you will get a high quality bilingual uh, technology. Okay, so that's the purpose of this research. Okay, we have do some we have done some uh, experiment on uh, the document provide, provided by I China. Okay, translation is trans, uh, translation is given by I China. Okay, so the document is related to some some manual. Okay, some manual for for manipulating Boeing aircraft. Okay, so in. So in total, we can find this. that corp that copper is not so big. It's not so big. So we in total, we can find th over 300, 300 bilingual terms. Okay. Some interesting things you, we can find. Some interesting. For example, we we find some interesting. You know this because this is like a manipulation uh, document. Okay, for for pattern how to how, how to uh, manage uh, how to fly the uh, I, uh, the airplane okay so the quality the transmit quality should be very high but we still have some inconsistency for example there is multiple English to one Chinese for example glide slow glide slow to Xiamada okay two English term to this one to one Chinese term this just this uh, variation is minor because just a space. It seems doesn't matter, but for this one, more serious. So main gear, main landing gear, below, uh, map to this one. But you can, if you look at these two terms, it seems its meaning are different. Okay, but Chinese translation is said. Also, we have why English to many Chinese. Terms, for example, alternative uh, brake hydraulic system to this one or to this one. But in this Chinese translation, uh, brake is omitted. I don't know if this is is correct or not. Okay, but there may result some inconsistencies. Another example is master warning lights. So Chinese translate this one translated, this one untranslated. So. I think this is unnecessary inconsistencies. Okay, you you we, you can have more example I system, so you can as icon or also as this one. But it seems to me these two Chinese terms, its meaning are totally uh, quite different. Okay, so so this program you have two functions. Function one is it can con construct. With the assistance of this program, we can construct a high quality bilingual terminology. The second one, it can find some inconsistencies. Okay, so it will be very useful for terminology standardization. Okay, so that's uh, when? Don't know. Five minutes? Okay. So this is per. Uh, the algorithm. So we have step one. We do sentence alignment first. Okay. You need to. So this is an algorithm. So we need to design. We, we need to design an algorithm that can align sentence one by one. So this one to this one. This one to this one. This one to this one. So that the sentence alignment. We have developed a algorithm that can perform sentence alignment. Uh, very with very high uh, accuracy and uh, robust. It's very robust. Okay. The step two is we do bidirectional word alignment for Chinese to English, English to Chinese, then try to merge the results of bidirectional word alignment. Then step three, we do some other processing to 
get high quality, high qualified uh, bilingual term players. Okay. Okay, that's part one for terminal extraction. The last part is a written work, so it's very simple. It's, it's simply a, a keyword we uh, we call Weibo uh, macro blog keywords. We expanded this algorithm to to just just find idioms, traditional Chinese idioms in macro blog of a user. Okay, so for example, this is a very famous movie star, okay, a Chinese movie star. His blogs, her blog, so we can, the program can find blog blog for her automatically, so you can see all the, we have a complete idiom database, okay, so all the terms, all the idiom occur in her article, at least. Okay, the latter one means uh, most significant, most significant idioms. Okay, score. We can give a score of this person. So, unfortunately, just thirty-eight score. So, one hundred. The, the score is range from zero to one hundred. Okay, so not so good. Not so good for this. For this person. But if you try Chinese, this this user, the name of this user is uh, traditional Chinese study, studies. So the idiom cloud is traded for this website like this. Okay, you can see many So in fact, this one can be used as an indication of, I mean, to measure the, measure the level okay, of the user use of traditional Chinese idiom, and indirectly the, to test the level uh, of writing Chinese articles. Or if you know more Chinese idiom, that means you have more knowledge of, about Chinese culture and Chinese Okay, so summary. So keyword and terminology addressing are useful in mono are very useful, okay. Either in monolingual or in bilingual context. A public platform such as Cinema Micro Blogging or Apple App Store shops could be good places for showing your applications. Okay, so we still have a lot of things to be done. Okay, so for example we we found Wikipedia. Is a very useful uh, resources for do for for doing lexical studies for Chinese. Okay, so we can also cons we, we are trying now we are trying a lot of things based on Chinese Wikipedia. Okay, so for example, this this algorithm can find relationship between terms. Okay, uh, so the calculi calculation calculation. Uh, Com uh, computing the similarity is totally based on Wikipedia articles. Okay, so we we have a lot of things to be done in the future. Okay, thank you.